So we have all just witnessed a moment that will go down in cinematic history. Barbenheimer fever struck over the weekend. Obviously, Barbie and Oppenheimer both in cinemas at the same weekend. Everyone was abuzz. But the thing that stood out to me was that Barbie has a ton of merchandise. And Oppenheimer didn't really have hardly any. So I decided to reach out to Universal. And um, amazingly, they actually got in touch with me and they have sent me this. Now, I I haven't opened this yet. I, I have no idea what it is. Um, so instead of this kind of like, I usually do like a, a jokey cold open uh, for some of my reviews, but instead I'm going to treat it as a bit more of an unboxing. <laughs> now, again, I want to stress. I, I do not know what is inside this. It's been sent to me from Universal, so let's see what it is. I, it's really, like, light, so... Um, I mean, I, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but... It's... <laughs> um, it's empty. <laughs> okay. Well, this is this has turned out to be quite anti anticlimactic, really. Um, it's it stopped ticking, and I I don't know, no, nothing's happened. Um, yeah, so much for unboxing. <laughs> let's just uh, let's just get on with. <laughs> And our imaginings horrify us. They won't fear it until they understand it. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to my channel, and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews. On today's video, one of the most prestigious filmmakers is back with a brand new project that is expected to blow a lot of people away. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I had to get one explosion joke in. I, I promise there are not going to be any more in this review. Here is my review of Oppenheimer. J. Robert Oppenheimer is widely known as the father of the atomic bomb. And in this extensive look at his life and work, we explore his beginnings as a quantum physicist, partnership with the US government to develop a weapon to win the war, and eventually the fallout, involving communism allegations and countless court cases. Biopics might not seem like a particular pairing with the works of Christopher Nolan. I mean, he's the mind behind the Dark Knight trilogy, the man who would explore the world within our dreams. He'd jet off to the far reaches of space and would have fun inverting time in on itself. The persona and work of Oppenheimer actually lends itself quite well to the work of Christopher Nolan. And within the opening moments of Oppenheimer, you soon realize that this is a biopic but done in the Christopher Nolan way. It's unconventional. It's quite confusing at points, and it is deliberately non-linear. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't consider this an issue. I actually don't mind the way in which Nolan tends to frame his narratives and plot. He treats it like a giant jigsaw puzzle. It doesn't matter in the order in which you put the pieces together, so long as that by the time you complete it, you see the bigger picture that has been assembled. With Oppenheimer, it's a little trickier, because this is a true story that's being told. Besides what he created, I don't know a great deal about who Oppenheimer was. And if I'm being completely truthful, I did feel like I was at a bit of a disadvantage because this film rattles through introductions at such a blisteringly quick pace. 
As well, Nolan speeds through extensive discussions of nuclear physics. He encompasses the current political discourse that's going on with the fear of communism rising. And in my personal opinion, I don't think he's necessarily doing his due diligence of making it in any way accessible. The first 45 minutes of the film, it really did feel like I was having to play catch up a lot of the time, which given the topic at hand, was pretty damn exhausting. That being said, once you are caught up, and however long that may take for you, that is when you really begin to see Nolan's vision come to life. Yes, this is yet another masterclass from Christopher Nolan. No one does scope and scale like Nolan. No one. Even with a film practically consisting of discussions taking place in dingy boardrooms or science classrooms, he has a way of magnifying everything so it shifts into an odyssey of the grandest proportions. Part of that reason is to do with his writing. Now in the past, Nolan has received a fair bit of flack uh, garnering his writing. It's often critiqued as overcomplicated, a little emotionless and let's touch on the overcomplicated dialogue because uh, yeah that is quite common in Oppenheimer. That being said even though I may not have understood all of the complex terminologies that characters were spouting what I did understand was the importance of what was being said. I was conscious of the information that mattered. Look Nolan when he writes a screenplay is often the smartest man in the room. There is no competing against that. But if you're fine with that, if you can just go along with it, there's no issue here. The story jumps around between the build of the Trinity test, Oppenheimer having court cases about his communistic behaviour, as well as a congressional hearing involving one Louis Strauss. In typical Nolan fashion, the story weaves in and out, interconnecting pieces and weaving the story together when it feels like it. Ultimately, do I feel like this is the best way in which the story could have been told? No, I, I, I don't. I think... <laughs> Given Nolan all of his credit, this story could have actually been told in a bit more of a simplistic manner, but ultimately it's not. You've got to work with the hand that you've been dealt, and it is undeniably still so engaging. Much of the reason as to why it is so engaging is because we are treated to a first-class selection box of outstanding performances. Captaining the ship is Killian Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer. Commanding the screen with every single micro-expression, line of dialogue, and precise body language, Murphy was transformative in this role. And what I love most about his performance is the sudden shift in Oppenheimer's outlook. We go from wide eyes, excitable physics genius who feels like he's on the precipice of a landmark discovery, to a tormented intellectual haunted by his creation as he fears the repercussions moving forward. It's phenomenal work from Murphy, and definitely expect his name to be thrown around when talking about the Oscars later on. Joining Murphy along this sprawling saga is Robert Downey Jr. as Louis Strauss, a figure who comes into Oppenheimer's life later in time, and Downey ensures he leaves an indelible mark on the film. Stripping away many of the Tony Starkisms we've seen him dally around with aplenty, this is an incredible reminder that he is a tremendous performer, and I would argue that as of right now, he is easily my front runner for Best Supporting Actor. Emily Blunt also turns in one of her best performances as Oppenheimer's wife Kitty. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't think she was explored as much as the character probably should have been, and as a result, is fairly underwritten. But she gets one seriously memorable scene where Blunt totally brings the house down. I could go on and on and on about how talented this cast is, and I'm not just talking about how good their performances are in this film, I'm just talking about the sheer size of this ensemble. Um, I'm not going to go through each and every single cast member, I'm just going to give you a, a list of names, rattle off a few, whose performances really, really stood out to me, and actors that didn't have the biggest amount of screen time, but with what they were given, certainly made the most of it. I'm talking about the likes of Alden Ehrenreich, Jason Clark, Benny Safdie, David Krumholtz, Josh Hartnett, and Rami 
Malik. As to be expected with the Nolan picture, it is a technical marvel. His use of alternating between colour and black and white, as he's mentioned plenty of times within the press tour of this film, gives a good contrast between the subjective and the objective. Not only that, but Hoyt Van Hoytma's cinematography encapsulates the scope of the work that all have managed to pull off here. Not just within making this film, but ultimately understanding the work that was required to make this trinity test and the ensuing after effects of it even possible and then there's ludwig goranson who reminds us all that he is one of the best film composers working today he has created an electrifying mix of orchestral and synth soundscapes alternating between marrying together in perfect harmony and clashing together in a violent, ferocious explosion. The sound design will blast a hole through your friggin' chest. I saw this in IMAX and the experience was deafening. I wouldn't have it any other way. Not only that, but when you are experiencing the, the, the Trinity test in its full or on horror, you have to see it in IMAX, you have to see it in the full picture to truly appreciate that significance. But the sound and the bass almost send shockwaves through the audience. I think my teeth literally chattered at one point. So by the time the credits hit, the weight of Nolan's film and the work of Oppenheimer really began to sink in, leaving me and likely most of the audience that I watched it with, reeling from the ramifications of the discovery that Oppenheimer made and the creation of a weapon that was initially intended to put an end to the Second World War, but also to all future wars, yet in turn signifies our possible mutual destruction and the impending end to civilization as we know it. Next video, I, I, I'm reviewing Barbie. This may not be the best that we've seen from Nolan, at least for me it's not, but for a filmmaker known for his gigantic set pieces and daring reach, it is his most contemplative. An all in depth and extensive character study of a man burdened with powerful knowledge that when put to use, created a potential doomsday. Murphy and Downey Jr. give award-worthy performances, but they share the film with a ridiculously talented ensemble, all helmed by a writer and director at the height of his powers. It's by no means the easiest of watches, but it is one of the most compelling films of the year. Many have compared Nolan to Stanley Kubrick, and if so, this is Nolan's Doctor Strange love, but less satirical and more Herculean. I'm going to give Oppenheimer an 8.5 out of 10. Anyway guys, those were my thoughts on Oppenheimer. I'm really curious for this one. What did you think of the film? How did it make you feel? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, I would like to know for Nolan's next film, what genre would you like to see him tackle? I've been very open and vocal about this. I want to see Nolan take on horror. However, there are certainly elements of Oppenheimer that are quite horrific. But that is all we have time for here today. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.